Another big complication of kidney disease is metabolic acidosis. And it's important to talk about, it's not commonly thought of, but uh, for myself, I uh, think about it a lot because I, it has a potential to affect the progression of kidney disease. And uh, so let me take a moment to explain this. So kidneys lower acid levels normally. Uh, that's one of the many functions that they have. But these levels of acid rise in kidney disease because the kidney isn't working so well. Dietary proteins, especially those of animal origin, are the principal source of acid generation. And alkali has been shown to slow CKD progression. Alkali is uh, a base. You can think of it as a base. Uh, it's the opposite of an acid. A very common form of alkali is baking soda, hence the photo there. So this is a, uh, a graph of various foods and their uh, acid or base potential. The average dietary acid load is net acidic in this country and it involves 50 to 75 milliequivalents per day of acid. And the kidneys work to excrete that acid. And if the kidneys are not healthy and they have uh, some level of dysfunction, as you can see, this acid load then starts to accumulate and then can cause problems. The net acid load of the average American uh, is a product of a diet that's high in animal protein and low in fruits and vegetables. Uh, as diets uh, uh, include more animal-based foods, they tend to be more acid producing. And you can see this on the graph here. Uh, hard processed che cheeses are at one end, egg yolks, uh, then followed and you have meat, poultry, fish, soft cheeses in the kind of neutral area you have grains, rice and pasta, lentils, milk, yogurt, wine, coffee, fats, and oils. And then you start moving into foods that are uh, less neutral and more basic. And these include your fruits and vegetables, spinach, and then ultimately raisins. Raisins are listed all the way at the end because of the way uh, this graph is uh, constructed as mill equivalents per 100 grams of serving. Uh, raisins are dehydrated uh, grapes. Uh, uh, so as such, uh, they have a concentrated amount of base per 100 grams because the water content has been uh, removed from it. Uh, but many uh, dried fruits and vegetables would have a higher net uh, base content. Uh, but for those with kidney disease, then the problem is potassium, especially with dried fruits and vegetables. Uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later. A vegan diet is nearly acid neutral, which is important to note uh, because you can actually treat an accumulation of acid, which is known as metabolic acidosis uh, with fruits and vegetables. The current treatment or current gold standard for treating this condition in patients with kidney disease is with baking soda, also known as sodium bicarbonate. And several randomized controlled trials have shown that two to four cups of fruits and vegetables are just as effective as using baking soda. Uh, this is one of the few areas where we have a robust amount of randomized controlled trials showing a consistent benefit with using fruits and vegetables for a treatment of this condition. Uh, the reason fruits and vegetables are effective for treating metabolic acidosis is because they have natural alkali like citrate, malate, and bicarbonate. And this has been studied in stages uh, of chronic kidney disease one through five. And not only are they uh, good for treating metabolic acidosis, but when they compared to studies using baking soda or sodium bicarbonate, they actually were better in other parameters, such as weight loss, uh, blood pressure, and urine protein. What was noted in these studies is that those who ate the two to four cups of fruits and vegetables had more weight loss, they had lower blood pressures and lower amounts of urine protein. So there's just, there's just more benefit to eating these foods. Uh, as opposed to taking a pill. And again, uh, despite these foods being plants, uh, there was no increase in potassium levels. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. So after some of these studies were published, an editorial was, uh, was then written that uh, the key to halting the progression of kidney disease might be in the produce market and not in the pharmacy. And they kind of compare and contrast the pros and cons of each. And as you can kind of see here, uh, the pills have, um, have uh, really one benefit, which is increasing the alkali intake, uh, but they also carry a sodium load. But if you just eat natural alkali in form of fruits and vegetables, you get all these other benefits without that added sodium load. 
And so this kind of uh, got people thinking that maybe we should reconsider how we treat this issue. The reason that they titled that as uh, the key to halting progression of CKD is because what they, the main purpose of these studies was to see if treating uh, the acid levels would decrease the progression of kidney disease. And indeed it does. And uh, uh, the main researchers on this published a five-year, uh, published their five-year results a few years ago. And uh, I have it here and it, their, uh, their uh, life work can be distilled basically into uh, these three graphs. And what you can see is that uh, for those who are in the usual care group who receive no treatment for the metabolic acidosis, had a decline in that EGFR number of percent kidney function with time. It went down like this from about 40, about to down to about 20 uh, uh, for EGFR. For those who are treated with HCO3, which stands for just bicarbonate or baking soda, uh, they started from the same point, uh, but they decreased a lot less. They ended up around 26, 25. Uh, at the end of five years, as opposed to uh, 20. And uh, uh, sorry, uh, that was, uh, that they ended up around 28 or so, 27.5, 28, as opposed to 20. So substantially better uh, than their counterparts who were not treated at all for this metabolic acidosis complication. Finally, you have the group that was treated, instead of being treated with bicarbonate, they were treated with fruits and vegetables instead, which is a natural way of treating this issue. And they started from the same place uh, to make things even. And they ended up in pretty much a slightly better place or the same place as their bicarbonate treated counterpart, uh, just to below 30, so 28, 29, uh, compared to um, the 20 that was seen here in the usual group. And basically the take home point is that eating fruits and vegetables does slow down the progression of kidney disease uh, by treating this uh, acid accumulation. And uh, for those who uh, uh, are, are taking a bicarbonate, that is fine. You're not gonna get the added benefits of fruits and vegetables, but if you can do it with fruits and vegetables, it's probably better. The fruits and vegetables that they used were not anything that was out of the ordinary. Uh, they used just your regular run of the day fruits and vegetables, apricot, apples, apricots, oranges, peaches, pears, raisins, strawberries, Vegetables included carrots, cauliflower, eggplant, lettuce, potatoes, spinach, tomatoes, and zucchini. It's important to note that uh, these folks consumed uh, potatoes and tomatoes, which have historically been avoided because of their potassium content, but we'll get to that a little bit later. And not only did they have this uh, 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 reduced progression of kidney disease, like I was stating earlier, they had lower weights. They lost about four kilograms, which is very impressive just by eating two to four cups of fruits and vegetables per day. They also had lower blood pressures, about eight millimeters of mercury less, which is substantial. And again, they did not have an increase in their potassium levels in their blood, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Mm -hmm.